Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by. Uh, we're going to do a video today on 10 beginner tips for fat biking. Uh, I'm entering my fourth uh, season uh, fat biking. Uh, and by fat biking, I'm focusing on the snow because when people think about fat biking, typically that's kind of what they associate it, associate it with. And really, uh, the, the snow biking aspect really is significantly more different than riding in any other terrain. Uh, obviously, anytime you're on a fat bike, you're sort of fat biking. But riding in the snow is different than anything else that you would do uh, even on a fat bike, really. Um, there's some, definitely some unique aspects to it. Uh, so today, we're going to go over those uh, 10 tips, uh, things I've learned in my uh, last few years of doing it. And hopefully, if you're just starting out, it'll give you a leg up on getting going and having success. And uh, bottom line is having uh, just more fun. So if you're just starting out, hopefully these 10 tips will give you a, a better foundation and let you get uh, on the aspect of this having as much fun as possible, having the best experience possible. Because there's certainly some things, if you're not uh, prepared for them, uh, can you know make for a challenging day. So the first thing, uh, we're going to talk about just a little bit about what is a fat bike. If you're watching this video, you probably have some sense as to what it is. And I do have some other videos on my channel uh, with some fat bike information. Uh, if you want to see uh, an overview of uh, uh, fat in, de in depth of what a fat bike is. But a uh, fat bike typically uh, it has four to five inch uh, wide tires. And, you know, on a, a mountain bike, usually they're anywhere from 2.1 to 2.5 can be a little bit bigger and there are a lot of plus size bikes out there which we won't even get into but a fat bike is usually running four to five inch tires i actually have two fat bikes uh, my first one that i bought uh, used a few years ago is a surly pugsley it's a 2014 surly pugsley and it has four inch wide tires on it it's been great um, but I just wanted to step it up and I really liked the new Surly ice cream truck and it really appealed to me for some other reasons and it actually uh, comes stock with 4.8 inch tires and you can actually run even bigger tires than that on it. You can run bigger tires on the pugs too. I think you could probably fit 4.3s confidently on it. Um, but that's typically what you're looking at on a fat bike. So the, the point of the fat bike is this. So there are three primary advantages to the tire size on a fat bike. One is traction. You get a ton of traction because the contact patch is so big. And usually the treads are pretty aggressive. You can certainly get less aggressive treads if you choose. Uh, but uh, as you'll see, uh, the tires I'm using on both my bikes are pretty aggressive, which is a big help in the snow. It gives you a ton of traction combined with the contact patch. Uh, two, uh, the second thing is that uh, the tires actually act as suspension. So both my bikes are rigid bikes, meaning there's no suspension components, no shocks. Uh, there are fat bikes out there that have them. I can fit a front shock on my new Surly ice cream truck and down the road I may want to do that uh, for summer riding and dirt trails and things like that. Uh, but one of the big advantages are their, their rigid bikes, uh, which means they're simple and they're reliable and they're durable, yet uh, the tires actually give you suspension uh, effectively, uh, especially when you start adjusting your air pressure. So that is one of the huge advantages. And the third huge, huge advantage is uh, to the extent you can get flotation, they certainly give you flotation. Now, if you would take a road bike and put it on any kind of snow surface, it would pretty much cut right through to, and, and be unrideable. Even most mountain bikes are not very effective in most snow conditions. They can be good in some. Uh, I'm not saying uh, people do it and uh, have success, but a fat bike really excels uh, in those conditions, uh, which we'll I'll get to a little bit later in the video. So just a couple more quick things on the bikes themselves. Uh, the bikes range just like all bikes. They range anywhere from you know a few hundred dollars to thousands of dollars. Uh, it, it doesn't really uh, you know there's a full range of what you can uh, buy uh, these days with fat bikes. Pretty much most companies uh, make them. Uh, but uh, my bikes are both steel frame bikes and th those appeal to me for a number of reasons which we really won't drill, drill down into right now. Uh, but my point is that uh, as long as you get a functional fat bike, you can go out there and have fun. Um, obviously, some will excel in certain conditions more than others. But uh, again, uh, I would say buy the best bike you can afford and go have fun with it. Okay, on the tip number two, uh, one of the things, uh, the things I learned in my very first uh, snow bike ride on my fat bike was I bought like a $20 plastic water bottle holder. Uh, bolted it up, went and rode my bike, and very first ride, 
Uh, it was cold, I'd been out there for a while, and I pulled my water bottle out and it snapped. Uh, so I learned uh, I only run metal water bottle holders on my fat bikes. Uh, this is just a spare I have laying around, but it's an example. Um, you can get these in aluminum, steel, or if you want to spend a little more and have a little more bling factor, you can certainly get them in titanium. Uh, the ones on my fat bikes are both aluminum. This one's aluminum too. Uh, one of the other side benefits is these are usually really cheap. Like you can get these for like five bucks, 10 bucks tops, uh, which is another uh, bonus. And on a fat bike, which is, you know, they're heavier bikes anyways, uh, you're probably not counting grams on weight uh, on that type of bike, at least not in my opinion. Uh, but uh, carbon fiber uh, may be okay. I'm going to put a huge asterisk by it. I wouldn't risk it. I wouldn't pay for that uh, and risk uh, having that happen. Uh, certainly carbon fiber frame bikes do fine in a cold. It's not like the frames are breaking when they get cold or anything like that. But this is a different app application. Uh, you know, it would be extremely thin material and it's really flexy as you're pulling your water bottle in and out. And you do want your, you do want it to be snug so it holds your bottle secure. So what that means is when it's mounted on the frame and you go to pull your bottle out as you're riding, um, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna, you know, put some stress on it. So I've never had any issues with the metal ones. I highly recommend getting a metal frame. Okay, now we're on to tip number three. And as you can see, we're talking about water bottles. Uh, so what's special about this is it's insulated. And this is by uh, Polar. Uh, I use, I've been using these bottles for years. I love them. I use them in the cold and in the warm. And being that they're insulated, uh, what I'll usually do is I'm, if I know I'm going to do a snow bike ride up in the mountains, so, you know, below freezing temperatures typically, I will put warm water in this and it'll keep it warm and as I do my ride. Not only does it feel good to drink warm water when you're riding, in my opinion, uh, but you put warm water in an insulated bottle, it'll stay warm and even if it drops some it won't freeze so that's the bottom line now this isn't really for like if you're doing like multi-day bike packing the, this isn't going to prevent that this is more for the short term and these work great in the summer too so in the summer i will fill it up with ice fill it up with water and i can ride in you know 100 degree heat uh, for a couple hours and it'll it'll keep it cold for the first hour and still cool by the second hour usually uh, by the time i'm into the second bottle um, you, you know, it's, it's fine, but, um, so highly recommend an insulated bottle. There are better insulating bottles out there as far as, uh, their effectiveness, but I like these cause, uh, they look cool. Uh, they fit great. Uh, they're in and out easy. They stay secure uh, and they work well. So, uh, there's a number on the market, uh, of bottles on the market, but, uh, this is the one I like, but an insulated bottle is a huge bonus when you're uh, riding in the cold. Okay, for tip number four, uh, we're actually going to talk about something that's actually going to be fairly new to me. Uh, I, I don't do a lot of night riding, riding in the dark, um, but I'm getting into it this year. And so with fat biking, usually, obviously it's in the winter. And one of the things that typically happens is, uh, especially if you're trying to do it during the week after working and things like that, is you're just not going to have enough sunlight. Uh, so just for to be able to ride and be safe and be seen, uh, uh, Proper lighting is a, is a good thing. This is just an example of a, a bike light I have, and it's, uh, uh, it's a powerhouse. It does a good job. It has a multiple uh, uh, different settings on it, and it uh, does a great job. So this mounts on uh, my handlebars. It has a handlebar, handlebar mount, mount to it. Uh, and then I will use, also use, in, a, in addition to that, I'll use a headlamp. Uh, just one of my uh, good quality hiking headlamps and that way I have something not only do you get more light but you can move your head and throw light where you want to see um, and this will keep light uh, in front of you as you're riding uh, so it's important to be seen and you can always uh, throw a light on the back uh, like a red light uh, if you want to make sure people behind you can see you too uh, again just for safety Okay guys, now we're gonna get into tip number five and we're gonna transition into the clothing aspects. Uh, I think we're just gonna start from the bottom up and as you can see, uh, boots. So uh, I would tell you that any pair of boots you have that keeps your feet warm and dry, um, just use those, get out there, get going. Um, as you go by, you'll find if they're working or not. Um, I was using another pair of boots when I first started and they seemed okay. Uh, they were always okay for my general winter use in the past, 
And once I was fat biking and getting out there in the extreme cold up in the Colorado Rockies and getting you know past that hour mark, I would notice my toes would start to get cold and then I knew I needed to upgrade my boots, so I did. Uh, the other factor is weight. Um, so I found these, um, uh, they're North Face uh, Snow Fuse. Uh, I've had them for a couple years, they've been amazing. I haven't had any issues with my feet getting cold or wet since I bought these. They're fairly light, they're about, a, I think, a pound and four ounce each, which is uh, for you know something chunky and you know a real insulated snow boot, it's pretty light. I don't notice them when I'm riding my bikes uh, with these on. You know, they don't have any uh, impact, negative impact on me um, as far as the weight goes. Um, and you know they're easy on and off. You know, I can actually drive in these. So the other boots I had in the past, they were so bulky, like I would have to put them on at the trail and then take them off so I can you know leave. Uh, I can wear these, drive in these. So they're great all around, insulated. Uh, keep my feet warm. As you can see, they, they're, they're waterproof and you know, they have this high rubber uh, seam around it. So, you know, when you're in the snow, you're going to encounter uh, the snow itself uh, has the potential uh, to, you know, to make your boots wet, uh, but you're going to encounter those in between conditions where like puddles and all types of things like that. And these have been great in that. And they have great tread. Like you're gonna do a fair amount of bike, hike a bike uh, when you're fat biking. There's gonna be, you might hit a section where you just can't ride it for, uh, you know, the conditions aren't, aren't rideable. Um, so you might have to hike through it. So you want boots that uh, you can move around in that have traction. And you know, these have really good uh, snow traction. They're, they have aggressive tread. It's not too ridiculous where you know they're just cumbersome or difficult to ride in or anything like that. Like these are great. Uh, these are going uh, for about 90 bucks right now. Believe it or not, when I bought these, I believe I found them on sale. I want to say for in the $60 range, $60, dollars So um, you know, deals are out there. I like these a lot. Anything you know that's you know keeps your feet warm and dry will work. Um, but if you can find something that's warm, dry, and light uh, for a reasonable price, uh, definitely snap them up because uh, it's, uh, it's uh, one of the most important things. Okay, now we're on to tip number six, and we're still looking at the feet and the lower leg. And in conjunction with boots, you need great socks. Um, I use these. These are actually ski socks. So, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of using things uh, for multiple, multiple use. Uh, so I, I have some ski socks. Uh, what's great about these is two things. One, they're smart wool. Smart wool keeps your feet extremely warm and it's not extremely thick and bulky like some uh, non-wool socks will be. And uh, being ski socks, they're really high. So these actually come up just below my knee when I have them on. So you get that extra uh, distance uh, to keep your lower leg warm. Uh, so they're just a huge bonus. And then one of the benefits of wool is not just the warmth. Uh, it actually breathes, so if your feet do get a little sweaty, it will wick away moisture, or if your feet actually get wet, uh, it'll minimize the, the negative impacts of that. Uh, but I highly recommend uh, wool, smart wool uh, socks, especially ski socks work great. In conjunction with, this is kind of a bonus. I've only used these a couple times uh, for fat biking. Um, they're called gaiters, and what they do is they, uh, once you have uh, your your boots and your pants and everything on, you know, these slip, you slip your uh, foot through them. And if you're not familiar with what gaiters are, uh, you wrap them around your leg, uh, your foot goes through uh, the stirrup here, and you secure them and cinch them up. And what it does is it puts a, uh, a barrier um, from uh, just the top of your foot to pretty much your knee and it keeps uh, helps keep you dry and what, what, what you'll notice really the benefits if you're in deep snow uh, i use these for hiking obviously um, but for fat biking once in a while i might uh, i always have them with me and i might throw them on if, depending on the conditions if you're post holing a lot of snow and the conditions are such that you're having to you know hike hike a bike in a lot of snow uh, these can keep your feet extra dry because uh, uh, it'll keep snow from getting in between uh, your pant leg and your boot and getting down in there and, and getting things wet. So uh, nice to have, not need to have, uh, but I figured I'd throw them in here as just an option to consider. Okay, on to tip number seven. So we're going to kind of cover from um, your feet to your neck. Uh, these are Patagonia fleece lined uh, pants or tights. Um, I wear these uh, all the time, uh, basically anytime it's below 50 degrees and whatever kind of ride I'm doing, I'll wear these and they're amazing. Uh, not only uh, 
do they, uh, they're form fitting and sheer, which is actually a benefit, which you'll see in a second, but they're fleece lined on the inside and they're extremely warm, but not uh, hot. Like I never get overheated in these, but they always keep me warm. The wind doesn't really penetrate them, uh, which is great. Uh, so most of the time, this is what I'll be wearing. Um, however, uh, some conditions when I'm, again, up in the mountains, it can be really windy, really extremely cold. Um, I will add in uh, snow pants. Again, these are not cycling specific. Um, I think I got these at just uh, like REI. Um, they're not even in a, a, you know, a name brand. There's a, a store brand. Uh, but a good pair of snow pants, you might want to invest in these if you feel you need them. Uh, you don't want to wear, uh, so obviously in you know, snow biking, you're going to be wearing long pants. You don't want to be wearing jeans for sure. Uh, jeans are the worst thing you can wear uh, in the snow and the cold. Uh, one of the fastest ways to get hypothermic is wearing jeans that get wet and cold. Um, but you do want to wear some sort of long, uh, you know, legs, uh, uh, pants of some sort. So some sort of tights are great because you can put snow pants over them easily and then you know they're comfortable they don't bunch up like other other types of pants might um, I have in the past before I got these pants I would wear my hiking pants which are uh, like a light material wicking nylon type material um, but I would be wearing the snow pants over them so that was the reason why I was wearing them uh, but snow pants are great uh, on the top it, the one thing that's really important is always use layers. Uh, you want to layer up, uh, that way you can control your temperature as you're riding because sometimes you just don't know until you get there and start riding uh, what your exertion is going to be, what the temperature is, and you may need to add layers or subtract layers accordingly. Um, and even throughout the ride, you know, the, if, you know, here in Colorado, a lot of times uh, the first part of the ride is a lot of climbing. Uh, so I'm getting hot and I'm taking things off. And then the second part of the ride is a lot of descending. So uh, I'm putting layers back on because I'm getting cold. So um, layering is important. Usually I'll, I'll wear like a t-shirt uh, uh, base layer. Usually I wear some kind of fleece, uh, not this shirt, but with, uh, usually they have this sort of zipper, which helps control heat because you can zip it up and down as you get warm or cold. So that kind of helps uh, quickly to control your temperature. Uh, and then usually the only other thing I wear is this jacket here, uh, which is just a, it's an Eddie Bauer, it's a down jacket. I mean, it's a legit winter, winter jacket, you know, it has a hood, um, has good pockets, which is always important um, for when you're out and about, you know, it's nice to have uh, pockets for managing your stuff. This jacket does great. Um, wearing just those three layers, usually I'm fine, like uh, I rarely need more or less. Um, sometimes I will, you know, need to take off a layer. Uh, but usually I've got it dialed in now where I, I you know, I know what I need. So, uh, but again, whatever you have, I'll go with that. Okay, now we're on the tip number eight and we're going to kind of cover uh, what's left regarding uh, what you wear on the trail. Um, I think as I said earlier in the video, uh, I found if, you, if I keep my hands and my feet warm and dry, my experience is always good. I almost never have issues with the rest of my body getting too hot or too cold, um, but I have had issues in the past with my hands and my, my uh, feet. Um, and you know, it's obviously because those are the things that are most exposed, most uh, susceptible to things like frostbite and things like that, your extremities getting cold. Um, I already covered the, the feet side of things, but on my hands, um, I've ridden with some decent gloves in the past. Um, they would work for a while, and then they would usually get to a point where my fingertips would start to get cold. Uh, which is never pleasant. So uh, I finally found these gloves and these are, have been great. Um, I don't even know what they're rated for, um, but you put them on and, uh, and you actually have a thumb hole. So you can actually articulate if you have to do something, if you have to you know, get your phone out and do something on it, you can do it quickly, um, but then you can quickly uh, put your hands in there and it's fully covered. And it's still fine for riding and shifting and all that, I haven't had any issues with any of that, um, but it's kind of a mitten and it's plenty warm. I never have any issues with these gloves, uh, but again, I can just pull it off that quick and it actually velcros back here so it's not flopping around. And you know, once in a while I have had a couple times where I've gotten a little warm, even my hands, and that's the other benefit is if your hands are getting warm and sweaty and uncomfortable, um, you can just pull this off and you know, you can get some air in there and that's usually more than enough. So um, I love these. Uh, they're, they're just a, a no-name brand, basically, uh, but they've been great. So uh, whatever, whatever you have that works that keeps your hands warm is most important. 
Second thing we'll get into uh, moving up to the head is some eye protection. So uh, usually, uh, frequently when I'm riding at least, uh, it's sunny out or bright out and you're riding in snow so that amplifies it. So I think it's really important to have excellent eye protection. I will wear these often, uh, most, almost all the time this is what I'm wearing. They're a good set of Eddie Bauer polarized sunglasses. They do an awesome job, they're comfortable um, and they work great. Um, I have ski goggles. Uh, Again, in an extreme situation, uh, I always have them around. Um, I think I've only used them once or twice for actually fat biking, um, but an option, something to consider. Uh, maybe if you don't have a decent pair of glasses, but you do have uh, good ski goggles, you might want to consider them. Uh, they're a little tricky with the helmet, uh, but you know they, they, they do work. And then speaking of the head, um, as far as warmth goes, usually I will wear uh, a decent uh, beanie, something like this. This usually keeps my head warm. Uh, the benefit is if I do get overheated or get hot, I can take this off. I will always also have uh, uh, my headband, my ear warmer. Uh, this is mainly for the ears, but you know, it will give you a little extra warmth around the, the back of your neck and your forehead. Uh, again, just another option, something to have. It'll let heat escape if you're getting overheated, uh, but it'll still keep your ears warm, so good thing to have uh, handy. And then finally, the helmet. So I know a lot of people, I've encountered it multiple times talking to people, you know, they say things like, well, you're riding in the snow, why do you need to wear a helmet? You know, it's soft and it's not necessarily soft. Uh, you'll encounter a lot of, you know, mixed conditions, trail conditions. Um, a lot of ice at times and uh, the the thing about fat biking is you'll find is you will actually um, crash more than you do any other type of riding at least in my experience so um, if the conditions are mixed or challenging uh, or a section is um, you know you'll frequently find that you're you know you're going down and I haven't had any bad crashes fat biking but you will go down you just need to be prepared you need to be safe because um, you know, you can certainly uh, hit your head on who knows what at any point in time. And every crash I've ever had has been unexpected. So um, it's always important to wear your helmet, or a helmet. Um, and yeah, I just wear my regular mountain bike helmet and adjust it uh, for the extra uh, things I'm wearing. And they work great. Okay, tip number nine. We're going to talk about a few different things regarding uh, trail conditions and uh, techniques. Uh, for fat biking one of the the main myths on fat biking is you've got this bike with these big tires you can just float over anything you can get 12 inches of fresh snow and just go right right over it and that's just not the case uh, physics still apply and deep fresh snow is, is just not rideable um, in my experience you know once you get up to four or five six inches uh, depending on the consistency of the snow is it powdery or not depends on how rideable it is and i wouldn't want to do you know miles and miles in that you know there might be sections where you have to ride through it and you can uh, get through short sections of uh, deep uh, uh, unpacked snow but generally speaking what you're looking for when you do a fat bike ride you're looking for established trails and you're looking for it to be packed down so if there's hikers and you know usually it's like snowshoers or skiers and things like that uh, and just make sure you check, make sure uh, you can ride the trail you want to, because some trails, at least around here, do close for Nordic skiing or, ex or exclusive to Nordic skiing. You just want to make sure you uh, abide by that. But you want an established trail that is packed down, and then you can ride it with uh, you know, much more pleasure, and it's much uh, easier, and you can get many more miles in uh, if that's what you're looking to do. Um, but you will invariably encounter mixed conditions. You'll go from dirt to ice to snow uh, and everything in between. And then, you know, again, sometimes you'll have a section where it's just, it's, the, you know, there hasn't been a lot of traffic and it's a little, a little rough and you can try to ride it. And if you can, you can, if you can't, you can't. Um, but it's, it's just one of those things that, you know, people think you can just float over everything and you can't. Now you will be shocked uh, what you can ride and attraction you can have. The other thing I find is uh, I always try to ride uh, early in the morning or when it's really cold. And usually in the morning, you know, you've had, you know, around here it's been extremely cold at night. Uh, so you get really crunchy uh, bite in the snow and uh, you don't have to worry about mud and water and things like that. Uh, so that's always a benefit as I a tip as I always try to ride in the morning. So you, you'll, you'll learn those things for your specific trails, your specific conditions, but generally speaking, you want it cold uh, and early morning helps with that. 
Okay, on to tip number 10, and this is an important one. Um, so one of the things uh, uh, tying into what I was just saying about the trail conditions and you know using uh, you know having these fat tires is you actually want to air down the tires. Uh, you'll be surprised how low they can go on the on the tire pressure, and uh, but the, the the lower you go, and again it's going to be a trial and error thing. It's going to depend on conditions, rider weight. <clears throat> It's going to depend on your con the conditions and the weight of you as a rider, um, but uh, you you'll find that lower tire pressure will get you much more traction and much more successful. Especially the more challenging con the conditions are, the lower you're going to want your tire pressure. Um, but in conjunction with that, when you put the tire pressure really low, you do have the possibility of what's called burping a tire if you're running tubeless. Um, or you may have a situation where if you're running tubes, which um, most people are running tubes and fat bikes, you, you might have a condition where the conditions change and you want to air back up. Uh, so it's, it is important to always have, uh, and this is really, I think, for any bike ride, but uh, I always have a little air pump with me. Uh, this will, this works great for, you know, smaller tires. The fat bike, it takes a while. So uh, another alternative for a fat bike is, is uh, CO2. And it has an adapter, uh, and you put this on, and you can quickly uh, get a jolt of air in there. And if you're running tubeless, uh, this will be a big help, and it may reset a bead for you if, if you need to, if, if you uh, roll a bead or, or burp too much air out. So, uh, again, tire pressure, experiment with it. Don't be afraid to go uh, lower than you think, and you'll see that... Um, it's uh, pretty amazing what the bike can do as far as uh, what it can ride over. Okay guys, those were my 10 uh, beginner tips for fat biking. Um, hope you found them helpful. If you did, please uh, uh, drop a like down below. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, drop those down below too. Um, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. We have a lot more coming on the topic of fat bikes, cycling in general. I'm still gonna be getting into uh, a bunch of things with the Tacoma and some other things, outdoors oriented things. So we have a lot more coming. Uh, so I appreciate it if you uh, subscribe, uh, hit the bell notification, and uh, feel free to ask any questions. I'm happy to answer them down below. Thanks and see you in the next one.